hello viewers you're welcome to my youtube channel in this episode i've got this news i mean are you an african applicant specifically you're applying from nigeria you've applied for study you've applied for work you've applied for other visa visitors visa and still you've been denied so many times in this video today i brought this video to you to tell you why your application will be denied irrespective of how many times you try to apply to come into canada so i'll be going into the integrity to give you some statistical facts so that you can actually know why applicants from nigeria's and by larger view by those applying from africa always meet rejection whenever they apply to come into canada so, so grab a cup of water and get ready because this video is informative <laughs> Viewers, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. I still remember my humble self, MC Bernardino. This is Canada Reality, where I dish out content for those that are already in Canada and those that are aspiring to migrate into Canada. Is this your first time on this YouTube channel? Hit on the likes button, turn on the notification bell, and please subscribe if you haven't. And if you enjoyed this video, likewise, share with whoever you feel will benefit from it. For our returning viewers, thank you very much for believing in us. God bless you. All right, before I go into the nitty gritty of today's video, our heart goes out to Ukrainians. I mean, on this channel, we're supporting the Ukrainians and we're saying no to war, no World War Three, and we're begging, we're pleading with the Russian president to actually shield their weapon and let peace reign because peace and love is all we need to survive in this war. All right, so this video actually is, I also, when I studied some statistical fact, I decided to make this video and uh, kudos to Africa Scholar Initiative. Uh, that's a, a non-profit organization that is based in Canada yet, Canada here that help international students to come into Canada, bright international students. So this video today, so I got some statistical facts and I feel that I should share it with you because I know that's what this channel is meant for. So. Just like I said in the introduction that as an African, you've been applying to come into Canada and specifically I'll be looking at Nigeria as a case study. So permit me those that are from Africa, I'll be using Nigeria as a case study, but it applies to all Africans too. So you'll discover that um, so many people that apply for Nigeria to come from Nigeria to come into Canada, the majority of them, I mean, according to statistics um, that was carried out from January 1st to May 31st, 2020, that's two years ago, from January 1st to May 31st, 2020, and this information is coming from IRCC, I mean, Freedom of Information, it was gotten from them, based on the top 10 source country. So when I say top 10 source countries, I mean, the top 10 countries all over the world that apply to come into Canada on study. Once again, the top 10 countries all around the world that apply, that their students apply to come into Canada to come and study, the top 10 source countries. Nigeria is among them. I mean, so I will share with you what is the approval rate based on the statistics, statistics that was carried out from January 1st to May 31st in the year 2020. Indian has approval rate of 50, 51%. Japan has approval rate of 97%, South Korea has approval rate of 95%, Colombia has an approval rate of 66%, Nigeria has an approval rate of 12%, Bangladesh has an approval rate of 27%, Iraq has an approval rate of 30%, China has an approval rate of 64%, Philippines has an approval rate of 57%, and Vietnam as an approval rate of 56 percent so these are the top 10 source countries that apply to come and study in canada and based on that information that i shared with you you can see obviously there that out of all of them which nigeria seems to be among in fact to be sincere with you and to be to be factual nigeria is actually number three on these top 10 countries that apply to come into canada nigeria has the lowest approval rate which is switched to that 12 percent i mean how can you phantom that out from still on the same list you see that india has 51 percent south korea has 90 95 percent approval rate japan has 97 approval rate so that means that if a japanese out of 100 if 100 if 100 uh, japanese apply to come into canada there's a possibility that 97 percent or 97 actually out of the 100 will be approved that means only three will be rejected that is it let's just break it down and also that means that uh indian if out of 100 if 100 uh, Indians apply to come into Canada, 51 of them will be approved and 49 of them will be declined. There's a possibility, a probability. And now let's take it down to Nigeria. So that means that if 100 Nigerians apply to come into Canada, only 12 of them stand the chance of getting an approval. That is abysmal and that is not nice. And that is why 
and just like I told you that this information is coming from IRS, so it's not just something that somebody just made up from somewhere. I mean, you can verify that for yourself. So that actually shows that there's a huge bias for applicants from Nigeria and by larger extension from Africa. So this is the more reason why many people when they apply, I mean Nigerians when they apply, Africans when they apply to coming on a study in Canada, there's a huge percent that you're, you will be among the 88 uh 88 percent that would be rejected because the approval rate is just 12 percent as out of may uh may 2020 so some of you might want to say that this is 2022 based on statistics of those that have been following the trend it has been declined initially it used to be 15 percent in 2020 it was 12 percent and now that we're in 2022 god knows even if it has not degenerated up to 10 percent i don't have that fact i'm just sharing it with you so all right now so now, now we've talked about the top 10 source countries now now let us now prune it down to africans okay african let us look at what is the approval rate for Africans that apply to come into Canada on a study? What is the approval rate? All right. So I'll be, Rwanda has 5%. Rwanda has 5%. Kenya has 26%. Madagascar has 26%. Ethiopia has 18%. Once again, Nigeria has 12%. I mean, there are so many other countries, African countries that I'm not mentioning here, but I'm just giving you these five countries. Rwanda 5%, Nigeria 12%, Kenya 26%, Madagascar 26%, and Ethiopia 18%. So that really shows the bias Canada immigration, Canada's immigration system as towards African countries. I mean, I can't really not phantom it out, whereby Nigeria being number three on the top countries that apply to come into Canada to come and study, and our approval rate is 12%. That is that is derogatory. That is not nice because the huge money that we used to apply for the app to pay tuition fee, to pay for application fee, and at the end of the day, we still get rejected. That's that is. I mean, IRCC Canada government needs to actually look into this. Going further, I mean, there was this uh, survey that was done with IRCC staff. I mean, IRCC staff are those that are approved, that are in charge of. Uh, visa processing and uh, those are government Canada government officials that are in charge of visa processing so there's this uh, report that was done a survey that was done after the uh, incident that happened in the United States George Floyd that was killed so I mean black Lives matters and stuff so they actually did a survey among RLCC staff to actually know if there is truly there's racism in the in that department so let me give you the report the report was made public I mean you can go online if you actually want to see it for yourself so this is the, based on the survey. These are the key points that was discovered based on the survey that was done with IRCC staff about racism. So these are the key bullet points that was discovered based on the survey. So it was discovered that African countries are referred to as dirty terry. So once again, African countries are referred to among IRCC staff whenever they are treating African countries' files. They refer to some countries. Which Africa will be a huge part of? I'm, I'm, I'm very sure about that. They refer to Africans as Africa dirty, dirty, dirty. I mean, that is so derogatory. And also, another thing that was also discovered based on the report was that stereotyping Nigeria as a corrupt and unworthy nation. So, among the staff, whenever they see Nigerian applicants, whenever they see our application for study for work or whatever. They see us as Nigerian is they have that bias naturally that Nigeria is corrupt and unworthy. I mean, so that's the stereotype is there already. Another thing again is a racism impact decision of out I mean the outcome of the outcome of your visa, racism is part of it. Already the person treating your file already sees that this is Nigerian, this person is from Africa. The, the bias is there already. So definitely whatever decision he or she is going to make is going to be based on that bias he or she has initially. And also, another thing again that was discovered based on this survey is that additional documents are always being requested from Africans. I mean, when you submit your application, they always request, okay, submit uh, this additional document, submit uh, the, proof, uh, the proof of funding submitted is fraudulent. They always ask for additional document. No thanks to the bias they already have towards Nigerians and by extension, Africans. All right, so now let's now metamorphose and look at the processing time for work permits. I mean, a statistical survey was also done in this regards to, to see the top three countries that apply for 
uh, work permits all over the world. Let us see the processing time. When you go on IRCC website, let's see what the processing time is. So China is 13 weeks. I mean, if you apply for uh, work permit from China, 13 weeks, everything should be done. Indian, within 31 weeks, everything should be done. I mean, based on we have information we have from IRCC. Iraq, 15 weeks, everything should be done. Nigeria, it takes 69 weeks. You know, I mean, that's over a year, going to two years, before when you apply for work permit, before your application can be processed. And presently now, if you go on IRCC website, I challenge you, go and look at how many weeks it takes, if you apply for study permit in Nigeria, how many times, how long it takes, and compare it with China, South Korea, all these countries, Indians, and see what I'm, I mean, see for yourself what I'm saying. The facts are there. I mean, this actually shows bias, racism to Africans, applicants, to Nigeria applicants. I mean, it is, it is so bad that IRCC is not money enough to, to accept it. I mean, they are still shooting, they are still lying under the pretense that no, their staff are not biased, they do their thing based on truthfulness and worldliness. I mean, it is, it is glaring, it is right in our faces that Africans, Nigeria particularly, they are being, they are being neglected, they are being segregated. I mean, those acts of racism are in their decision making. Another aspect again that I want you to actually look at again, that are, I mean, that racism is actually imminent is in the issue of uh, SDS, SDS, and let's compare it with NSC. Okay, the SDS was a kind of program that was created some few years ago. I mean, to expedite application for applicants from Pakistan, from uh, I think from China, from Morocco. I mean, Morocco is one of the African countries on the list, majorly for the Western applicants. So SDSC states that if you can apply through that stream. Your application will be expedited and in 20 days you'll find yourself in Canada if you're applying for study permits. That's what SDSC is all about. So you'll discover that one of the key criteria under SDSC is that you need a GCI. GCI is more like you need to have a bank money in the bank for, for one year. And under SDS, what you need to have in the bank to show your proof of fund is just 10,000 Canadian dollars. That's all you need to have under the SDS. So a similar program was created for Nigerians too, for applicants from study permit applicants from Nigeria and it's called Nigerian Student Express. It was created three, four years ago. So this program is just like the SDS, but this one as NSE is just for Nigerian applicants. So the discrimination there I want to look at is this. SDS needs 10,000 GCI as a proof of fund, but under NSC, the requirement is that you need to have 30,000 Canadian equivalent in Naira. 30,000 Canadian equivalent in Naira. For the, you need to print the bank statement of six months, so over the last one year. I mean, the main thing I need you to understand there is that under SDS, Student Direct Stream, you just need 10,000 GCI for proof of fund. But under NSC that was created for Nigeria, it's times three. You need 30,000 equivalent in order for you to show as a proof of fund. Can you see that discrimination? Now let's look at IELTS. If you look at IELTS requirement for SDS, what the CLB you need is quite different from what you need is higher on the other side for NSC. And don't forget that Nigeria is, a, is an English speaking country. So, I mean, you can see another outer of discrimination in these two. So I'm just pointing out to you where this discrimination are and it's left for you to actually go online for yourself and actually see for yourself. I've told you about the approval rate from top 10 source country. I've told you about uh, the work permit processing time for Nigerians compared to the other uh, top three source countries. I've just told you about NSC now and the um, student direct stream, SDS. You can see those, when you just oppose these two streams, you can see huge discrimination, huge racism among the two of, between the two of them rather. All right, so now let's now talk about what is what, what are people doing about this? I mean, what led to this and how can we find ourselves? What, what is the step taken to actually resolve this? So, based on this information that I've shared with you, you can actually see for yourself that truth be told, there's out of racism in IRCC decision making. I mean, I've seen some people that have applied to come into Canada three, four times and still they keep meeting Waterloo, they keep meeting the debt, eating the, the post. I mean, 
they still they were still being rejected and when you look at their contemporaries from the other part of the world from asia from japan from south korea from india they stand a big chance i mean statistically you can see based on the percentage i gave you before so there's this body that is called the african scholar uh, initiative that i told you about you can actually look at look them up on facebook on instagram they are there they are there on youtube too i mean uh, thanks to professor gideon who is a nigerian i mean he took this initiative he wrote a letter to uh, the Minister of Immigration, Sean Fraser, sometimes in November, telling uh, the uh, minister about this racism and what they need to do about it and stuff. And he wrote them a letter. And uh, the feedback he got from the minister's office was that uh, there's no racism in RLCC, that uh, they, they are being fair and everything they do is transparent and the rest of them. Everybody knows that that feedback was just a, 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 I just want to call it a gimmick. I mean, is they just give us just something to just keep us quiet, but we would never, we would not keep quiet. So, in addition to that, um, the so that was done in a letter was sent to the minister's office in November, and sometimes in January this year, I mean, a few months ago, uh, the uh, professor Gideon, who is a professor in, uh, um, I think, a university in uh, Calgary, that's Alberta. He also took the initiative. He was invited by a standing committee that was constituted by Canada government on immigration. So this standing committee, they invited him, and he was there to actually talk to these uh, 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 MPs to tell them about this immigration uh, racism that is uh, geared towards Africans and Nigeria specifically. And uh, he, he addressed the committee. And he told, I mean, he made, statistically, he gave them the information, he provided the fact for them. And I was really impressed when I saw it on YouTube. You can actually see it on YouTube for yourself. I'll be linking it in the video description below. And he, he, he actually made his mind known and he told them what things needs to be done about this because this is getting out of hand. Yeah, so I feel, I mean, uh, Professor Gideon has done his part and... Uh, I'm also trying to do my own part too by enlightening you too. You can also read for yourself more online. I'll be linking some um, uh, some information in the video description of this video so that you can actually read for yourself. That truth be told, there's a huge percent that if you apply for study, to so apply for work as an African, specifically Nigeria, to come into Canada, there's a huge percent, there's a 88% that your visa application would be rejected. It is not because you've not done the right thing, you've not showed the right proof of fund, it's not because you've not... Uh, uh, provi provided the right, the right document you need to. It is just because somebody out there hates you because you are from Africa. Somebody out there hates you because you are from Nigeria. And normally, just seeing your application is not interested in the letter of expression, a letter of intent that you've written. He's not interested. All he wants to do is just just get your application out of his front by just rejecting your application. And whenever um, people like you that was rejected, whenever you apply for uh, for, for GCMS notes to actually know why your uh, visa application was rejected, they just go online and just print like 13, 14, 30 pages and send it to you, just giving you flimsy excuses for why your application was rejected. I mean, I've seen an application being rejected based on you. Um, I'm not convinced that you, I'm not convinced why you want to come into Canada. I'm applying to come and study in Canada. You're saying you're not convinced my purpose of Study, my purpose of coming to Canada. Why it's already stated in my acceptance letter that I'm, I've been I've been accepted to come and study in Canada. I mean, it's so it's so it's so crazy that I can't really phantom it out. And and another thing again, you need to know is that now Canada. I mean, it is it's a known fact that statistically that Canada makes over 22 billion annually, 22 billion dollars annually from international students from in 22 billion annually from international students so that goes to show that um canada the huge international student they bring in a lot of money into the canada system i mean if you scrap if international students stop coming to canada canada is going to feel it economically and also it is also a known fact that international students they 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 pay three times more than domestic students i mean there's some program that goes for fifteen thousand, fifteen dollars, fifteen um, rather five thousand Canadian dollars for domestic student. I mean PR or international um, Canadian citizen, but international student pay as much as eighteen to twenty thousand as tuition fee. So that actually shows that if international students are ready and willing to pay that money, so why are you discriminating on some of them? I mean, we are not saying that 
some countries are not corrupt. I mean, I know of a fact that Nigerian system, I mean, the government in Nigeria is corrupt, but you can't just use that as uh, as a yardstick to, to, to melt it down on international, innocent international students. And not just Nigeria is corrupt. I mean, globally, all around, everywhere, everywhere, everybody is corrupt. Russia has been accused of corruption now. Ukraine, I mean, Indians, China, South Korea, everybody has, I mean, they, they have their own uh, whatever they are battling. So you can't just uh, just say because of corruption, uh, Africans are being referred to as dirty, 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 and as a result of that, you're segregating, you're ostracizing them, and whatever they apply, all they meet is rejection. That is not nice. So all I'm just going to leave with in this video is that immigration ministers should actually look into this, and we're hoping that based on the standing committee, uh, uh, the, 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 the this information session they had uh, in January, that they will actually be doing something about this i decided to bring this video for you to you to actually enlighten you so that whenever you apply to come and study in canada on the study visa work permit or whichever case it is and you're coming from africa you're coming from nigeria i mean have it at the back of your mind that there's a huge percent that it's eight percent that whenever you apply your visa will be rejected it's not your own doing it's just because someone out there don't like you okay viewers do you, under, do you understand the video that i brought for you today if you enjoy it please hit on the likes button if you have a further question you need to ask me feel free to drop it in the comment section if you haven't subscribed to this youtube channel it doesn't bite please hit on the subscribe button and share the video with whoever you feel will benefit from it so like see you again in my next video stay safe stay blessed see you in canada very soon